can you do a statistical analysis if you do not have the data? In some cases, you can. So let's find out, when you don't have raw data, what are your options? Special thanks to Nerdy Tutors for supporting this video. Nerdy Tutors is an on-demand tutoring platform that connects students with the best matching tutors in minutes. They understand what sort of problem a student is having, and they use smart algorithms to find the best tutor who can explain the right concept. And they work with you so that you can live chat with your tutor, or you can do the whole session on the phone with Nerdy Tutors. Daniel from Norway wrote to ask, I am a fifth-year medical student writing my master's thesis on subdural hematomas. I want to compare two groups in SPSS, but I do not have the raw data for both groups. All I have are the summarized data. Mean age, number of participants, how many times they were operated on, complications, and more. What can I do to compare the two groups? Now, typically, when you do a t-test in SPSS, you have a scale variable and you have a categorical variable. And you have all the scores from each participant, which we call the raw data. But what if you didn't have the raw data? You had only counts and means and standard deviations. What could you do then? Now, analyzing without raw data is tricky, but it can be done. So here are my top five suggestions for what you can do. Show me the data. Now your best choice is to get the actual data. Can you write to whomever collected the data and ask for a copy of the original data set? Researchers are often willing to share, especially with students who are working on a degree. So don't be afraid to ask for the data. Old school formulas. All of the tests that we do in SPSS are built on formulas. If you have enough information, you can plug into those formulas and just solve it yourself. Now, I had a case like this where the researchers thought that they were sunk because all they had were some means and standard deviations and sample sizes, but no raw data. And I whipped out a piece of paper, did the math right from memory, and I told them the answer right there. And here is how you could do that same thing with a t-test. When you do a t-test with raw data, you use formulas like this. But you can accomplish the same thing with this formula. The s squared is the variance, which is the standard deviation squared. If you have the mean, standard deviation, and size of each sample, plug into the formula you will get a t-value that you can look up in a t-table to determine if it is statistically significant. Nonparametrics. Sometimes, and this is even more likely when you are working on a thesis instead of something for publication, you can just adjust your research question slightly and focus on the counts in the categorical data rather than the means. So you might focus on the number of people who did or did not have a hematoma rather than the mean score of the hematoma group. You could use nonparametric analyses or chi-square or Fisher's exact tests to get you to an answer. Odds ratios. This is a very simple formula that you can do with just counts. So consider the case where you want to understand the association between smoking the independent variable, and hematomas, the dependent variable. Calculate the odds for each group of the independent variable, smokers versus non-smokers. So for example, if there were 28 participants who were smokers and experienced a hematoma, and there were 13 participants who were smokers and did not experience a hematoma, then the odds of experiencing hematoma versus not for smokers are 2.15. That is, smokers would seem to experience about twice as many hematomas. Now do the same thing for non-smokers. This time, 
there were 15 participants who were non-smokers who experienced a hematoma. And there were 23 participants who were non-smokers who did not experience a hematoma. Then the odds of experiencing a hematoma versus not for non-smokers are 0.65. That is, unlike smokers, non-smokers would seem to have fewer hematomas. The odds ratio is the ratio between the odds of smokers experiencing hematomas to the odds of non-smokers experiencing hematomas. So for our example, this can be calculated as follows. You can see here that the odds ratio is 3.30. That is, the odds of experiencing hematomas are 3.3 times greater in smokers than in non-smokers. So how do you interpret these odds ratios? Well, if the odds are equal, if the odds of experiencing hematomas are the same for smokers and non-smokers, then the odds ratio will equal 1. But if the odds of experiencing hematomas is greater for smokers versus non-smokers, then the odds ratio will be greater than 1. And alternatively, if experiencing hematomas is less likely for smokers than non-smokers, the odds ratio will be less than 1. New software. If you know what you want to do but not how you want to do it in SPSS, lacking raw data, there may be a package in R that does just that. Now, some packages allow you to plug in known values and then use a technique to provide a, a bootstrapped answer. Or sometimes they back solve and they tell you an answer. And there's more complicated packages that use Monte Carlo models where you use multiple data sets of raw numbers that mimic findings from your article and then you analyze those. Now, which packages and how you use them would depend on the specifics of your data. In this case, Daniel had only those two groups. So I think that at least one of these previous approaches should work for him. So do you need help with your odds ratios or maybe with calculating those t-tests without raw data? Well, then maybe you should visit Nerdy Tutors and get hooked up with the best tutor to help you understand the math or the steps. With Nerdy Tutors, you can live chat with your tutor, or you can do the whole session on the phone. And I have included a special link in the description to help you find them. And those are my top five suggestions for analyzing without raw data. Thanks, Daniel, for that question.